Hey, David Brewster here with another three for all, and this is three Billy Gibbons licks from 1980. And of course, Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top is another, you know, just complete guitar legend, you know, a master of blues rock, you know, one of the most laid back and just smooth guitarists I can think of. You know, I mean, Billy rarely ever plays anything frantic or, you know, he doesn't shred or anything like that. It's all conviction and authority, you know, lots of feel, lots of expression, you know, a lot of that blues energy in his playing. But then he has this fuzzed out rock and roll side too. Just in case you haven't checked out uh, the first six albums from ZZ Top, you know, back in the 70s, uh, they definitely, you know, they continued obviously in the 80s and the 90s and they're still active today. But those first six studio albums from ZZ Top are just magical. There's something either in the air or in the water or something when they recorded and, you know, wrote that music and recorded it. You know, it's just magical. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of people about Billy and ZZ's music, ZZ Top's music. And, uh, you know, I'm surprised how many people don't know the first album, you know, ZZ Top's first album. And if you haven't heard that, I highly recommend after this lesson, just, you know, hop over on ZZ Top's channel and listen to it. You know, Brown Sugar and Bedroom Thing, and you know, there's all these great, great songs. And, uh, it's amazing that ZZ Top, you know, had that energy and their sound and their overall style right out of the gate, you know, the first album. And then from there, they just continued to run with that ball, you know, and by the time the 80s came, you know, synthesizers and keyboards, you know, started to appear, so it changed. But there's some magic in those first six albums for sure. The licks from this lesson came from a live TV appearance in 1980 um, in Germany, and I believe this was the first time ZZ Top was actually broadcast on European television. That was a pretty big deal. It may have just been the first time in Germany, but I think it might have been the first European, you know, TV appearance or whatever, where they broadcast it everywhere. But uh, there's some interesting licks, you know, all in a blues rock style. And there's some hybrid picking and bending and all sorts of stuff. So here we go. First lick is this G blues idea and he's really digging in and uh, he kind of slips out of the box into another position and then comes down. But there's a lot of pick, you know, energy and aggression in this phrase. Something like this. One more time. starting, you know, it's G blues, and he's starting in the uh, G minor pentatonic box right here. And then he's pulling off that C to the open G. And then he's grabbing D. And then hit the open G again. And then you're going to grab that D note and bend it up a step and a half, or a minor third. So that D is going to go all the way up to an F. Right there, you're going to release that bend and then come down, technically grabbing uh, the flat five, too, right there, that D flat. And that's where he's really digging in, kind of choking up with the pick. And you can hear it, you know, you can hear the percussive attack of the picking. like phrases like that where it's kind of centered around the box but then he does sneak you know into another position of G minor pentatonic and here's Billy playing this back in 1980 so I did mention this in the ZZ Top chord play that I put together but I did have a Billy Gibbons themed lesson in guitar player it was in the November uh, 2019 issue cruise control and it was basically a look at Billy Gibbons you know lead style we talked about pentatonic highways, we talked about Billy Gibbons licks, you know, hybrid picking, there's a bunch of stuff in there. But, um, so I did kind of attack, you know, a big part of his style in that lesson. So I highly recommend, you know, check out the guitar player lesson I put together. But then for this, we're really just going to expand a little bit more with the pentatonic highway. Because I did make two episodes, you know, in the Scales and Tails series. Here we are talking about Billy Gibbons, and he's a big, you know, component of this type of playing, I think he influenced a lot of players to dive into this kind of stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is, you know, in G minor pentatonic right here, and I'm just going to start on the note F and walk up the box like this. 
you know, pretty simple. I mean, it's really just the G minor pentatonic box, but I added this F and we also slid up to that C note right there. <laughs> Now, a lot of players, Billy Gibbons included, they will use their pinky, but you won't really find a lot of players um, like Billy Gibbons, um, you know, reaching up and, and grabbing uh, phrases like that. Occasionally he will, but more often than not, he'll use the pentatonic highway and basically do the exact same thing, but instead of like this, you know, Billy Gibbons would be more likely to do it like this. You know, same scale, just a different way of navigating through, you know, the strings and the fretboard. But, you know, within that highway, you can find all kinds of spots that Billy likes to visit, you know, and he'll create licks and phrases. that little area right there. Or maybe the lower position. Up next is this really bluesy lick, and he's using uh, hybrid picking in the beginning, and then there's some clever bending after that, like this. Let me do that again. So right there, he's basically, you know, centering things around uh, A minor pentatonic this time. But then he's sliding out of the box, you know, and grabbing that G note right there. So he's sliding from D to E and then grabbing that G. And he's basically hitting that like five times. One, two, three, four, five. And what you want to do is slide into that E, grab that G note, and then I'm using my middle finger to pluck that note. And then I'm using the pick to grab that E note. want to give it a little bit of vibrato after you plucked it. You know, think of uh, Have a Drink on Me, ACDC, kind of. And then right here... And I love how he's kind of smearing the notes around, you know, between those bends. So right there, that's pretty standard. And then grab the C right there and bend that up. And then this double stop on the seventh fret on the G and the B. And then end on that A note right there on the seventh fret on the D. Cool lick. Really cool lick. But here's Billy playing that back in 1980. The next lick features this repetitive bending phrase, and I've actually used this as a warm-up exercise to kind of wake my hand up, you know, when I first picked up the guitar. And I don't really use this, you know, as an exercise that much anymore because I'm very familiar with it, but I do remember, you know, I was a teenager in my early 20s, I would sit in my room and play variations of this lick forever, you know, just, you know, just trying to get a better feel of bending and just trying to smooth out some of my bending and vibrato. But it's something like this. <laughs> And there you can see we're basically in D, you know, minor pentatonic. And he's grabbing the G and bending that up and then grabbing A and then grabbing that C right there. So it's a very standard lick. You hear, you know, Hendrix and Clapton and Steve Ray Vaughan and a ton of players, you know, playing that phrase. But of course, there's Billy Gibbons, you know, back in 1980 playing it. But, uh, you know, that's a standard lick. And at the end, he really just 
does that lick one more time and then uh, comes down chromatically on the G. And I just like the way he, you know, finishes that lick out. Here's a bonus lick from this live footage and you know a lot of guitarists when they play guitar solos they end up you know really high on the fretboard and bending you know hitting notes that only dogs can seem to hear but one thing i do like about billy is sometimes when he plays a solo he'll do the opposite of that and he'll be down in these lower positions you know grabbing bends and pinch harmonics and these throatier kind of growling notes and then he'll cascade his way up you know somewhere higher but uh, something like this. One more time. So really it just starts with the open G ringing from the previous phrase. And then he starts grabbing this, you know, C note and bends it, you know, a half step. And then he's basically grabbing a G and bending that up a half step. After that G bend, just play the open A. And that's odd, or just kind of awkward, you know, if you're not used to bending and playing, you know, lead licks in lower positions like that. Because you're grabbing the C, the open D, and then you're grabbing C and F, and you're kind of smear bending that F note. there just come down kind of a traditional you know turnaround and definitely Billy does you know a lot of turnarounds like in his leads or at the end of a lead before it goes back into the verse you'll hear him throwing turnarounds a lot especially back in the 70s one more time here That's going to wrap this look at three Billy Gibbons licks from 1980. And I've never met Billy, but I've talked to a lot of people that have. And I've heard that he's just a sweetheart of a guy. You know, super nice guy. Um, you know, very friendly. You know, maybe a little quiet, but he's very, you know, approachable and, and just a nice person. But uh, I've never had the privilege. I'd love to meet Billy Gibbons, but uh, I've just never been in the same place that he was uh, at the same time. But there's lots of stuff you can learn from him. So if you're not really familiar with their earlier output, you know, from the 70s, dive in. It's just waiting, you know, for some fresh fingers and fresh ears to, you know, kind of lap some of that stuff up. Because there's tons of great tones and licks and phrasing, bending, pinch harmonics. I mean, he was playing pinch harmonics when Zach Wilde and Dimebag were in diapers, you know. So there's a lot of respect, you know, that you should give Billy Gibbons because... He's a pioneer, and he's still active, and one of the coolest guys on planet Earth. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Lunate Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content material. Thank you.